He was a poor, disgusting loser, but gets reincarnated as a prince with godly abilities. Lloyd was a disgusting commoner who got caught and was about to be executed by a bunch of nobles for being pathetic and ugly. The nobles laugh at him for having the weakest magic in the entire kingdom and claim that he doesn't deserve to live. Before killing him, however, they decide to disrespect him one last time and give him a free chance to use his spells on them. With anger blinding him, he uses his fire magic to attack the noble, but his magic is so bad that the nobles laugh at him once again, which makes Lloyd wonder why was he ever born like this. Following this, the noble decides to end his misery and shoots a fireball back at him to show what real magic is. Lloyd is immediately covered in flames as he screams in agony, but the very next moment he understands what true magic really as he admires the beauty of a noble's magic while wishing that he could get another chance at life so he can learn more about magic and become the strongest wizard imaginable. The next moment his eyes open and he finds himself in an unfamiliar room surrounded by maids. He wonders whether this is what heaven looks like and tries to cop a feel on one of them when accidentally he activates a magic spell which bursts through the roof of the castle immediately, surprising himself with how insanely strong his magic is even though he is just a toddler. It turns out that his wish get fulfilled, and not only did he get reincarnated with loads of mana, he also became not only a noble, but the seventh prince of the royal family. A couple of years pass by, and the kingdom seems to be prospering with people living peacefully and everyone earning enough money to eat and sleep happily. Inside the beautiful castle, the maids roam around the corridors to find Lloyd, who is hiding behind a statue to escape them. He starts running in the opposite direction, but runs into some politicians and immediately tells them not to inform the maids where he is. The politician agrees and asks whether he would like to go out for a hunt, trying to win his favor, but notices that Lloyd has already ran away. The blue-haired man calls him a stupid kiss-ass for trying to impress the seventh prince as he will never inherit the throne, but the blondie reminds him that Lloyd is the kid who reads spell books when he was not even one year old, refused drinking breast milk like a true gentleman, not to forget that his magic is so strong that he literally blew through the roof of the castle the day his was born. Lloyd on the other hand has no interest in the crown and runs around the castle in his new body, which has weirdly thick thighs for a guy, but anything can happen in this woke world. He manages to juke the maids and enters the royal library where his eyes start gleaming at the sight of all the magic books that he can't wait to read. He picks up one of the huge books, but before he could start reading, Silpha, his teacher, finds him and takes him out for sword practice. They engage in a sparring session at an incredibly fast pace, where they attack and counterattack faster than a man could blink and on first glance, it looks like the prince was able to hold his own against Silpha and her massive bonkers, but soon she is able to push him back as they take a breather. Lloyd complains about having to practice with a sword every single day as there is no way he would get the crown being the seventh prince, but Silpha tells him that every person should know how to handle a sword and protect himself regardless whether they are royalty or not. She claims that ever since she started training him three years ago, it's become her obsession and the only purpose. Lloyd tells her to get a life and touch grass sometimes, but she engages once again, only to be met by Lloyd's sword in a perfect block. They start matching each other's attacks and start clashing like Goku and Vegeta, while Silpha acknowledges that the prince's abilities have grown and he is becoming a better swordsman. Lloyd realizes that she is still holding back her true strength, just as usual. But still to match her, he is forced to use control-type magic, which is basically making him copy each and every move that she is making. In other words, he is cheating like my ex, but he is doing it because he wants to read and not because he is a thought. Even after this, however, he is forces back because the difference in their arm strength, reach and height gives her the advantage and puts Lloyd on the back foot as he is pushed back once again. He knows that if he doesn't fight well, she will make him train all evening, so he cheats some more by growing the length of his sword, using magic to grow his forearm like Sam Sulek, and starts levitating to counter the height difference. 
He engages her once again, but this time she realizes that he is fighting with much more force as they are able to match their attacks with each other, attacking and counter-attacking, while Lloyd uses his levitation magic to surprise her from a different angle. He decides to take a boost from the fountain to finish the fight, but Silpha calmly blocks his sword before telling him that he is cheating and slams him to the ground and smacks him on the head. She tells him that she knows he used his magic to increase the length of the sword which gave him a lot of reach and also started using levitation magic to increase his height. But instead of getting mad at him, she got moist and started praising Lloyd for being able to use two different magic spells at once, claiming that even the best mages in the court can't do that. Lloyd realizes that she doesn't even know he also increased his arm strength and was using control magic to copy her but keeps his mouth shut. That evening she takes him for a bath in the bathhouse and puts his head in between her massive plots, while the other girls tell him about the legend of an evil book inside the dungeons of the castle, which contains the trapped soul of an ancient evil demon. Hearing this, Lloyd couldn't wait and managed to slip by the girls and wandered through the corridors by using his invisibility spell and managed to walk past the knights guarding the doors to the dungeon which contains magic, strong enough to shake the entire kingdom. He manages to find the door to the forbidden library, but notices that it is locked by some protective spells, but thanks to his overpowered abilities, he easily nullifies the spell and enters the library while looking like a total futanari. He runs around the library, unable to contain his excitement at the sight of so many books, and decides to read a book and then reseal the library again. Before he could do anything, a book erupts from the pile and starts flying around while a weird demonic creature tries to come out of the book, but the protective charms bind him in place. He commends the boy for being able to break the barrier of the library, while Lloyd asks who the hell is he. The demon calls him a lunatic and claims that he is the ancient demon Grimm and asks Lloyd whether he can release him from the book. He claims that the seal is worn out anyways after so many years and it's only a matter of time before he escapes on his own. He then tries to bribe him with a bunch of gold, but Lloyd grabs a piece and squishes it in his fingers, telling the demon that his magic is very basic and unrefined, as he simply used dust to form a gold-like substance. He turns the gold into dust which surprises the demon while he tells Grimm that he will reseal the library's barrier in a while after he has read some books. The demon starts panicking and claims that the mage who sealed him is dead and he has no beef with the people of the kingdom. Lloyd doesn't buy his story, but the demon tries one last time and promises to teach him some ancient magic that is not in any of the books. This piques his interest as he immediately asks whether he will truly teach him Grimm promises to teach him and claims that he has a lot of magic power, which reminds Lloyd of the disrespect he had to face in his previous life. He removes his cloak as everyone knows thick thighs saves lives and uses his magic to unseal the barrier that sealed him. Grimm emerges from inside looking like a weird mixture of animals, while Lloyd says Uwu teach me magic please. The demon looks at him and without a second thought blasts him with magic so strong and dark that the entire library gets destroyed and turned to dust. He was ready to destroy the kingdom when the dust gets blasted away as he notices a huge magical barrier in place which protected Lloyd from the destruction, as he honestly tells the monster that he has never seen this magic before. Grimm gets angry and starts throwing dark magic blasts at him in quick successions, but to his dismay, the barrier doesn't even get a scratch as Lloyd tries to understand how to control this dark magic. He gets all steamy at this thought and grabs some of the dark magic around his fingers that shred his fingers like cabbage, while this masochistic freak licks his blood and asks Grimm to try his best magic on him. Grimm gets pissed off and splits his head into two and starts chanting two different incantations before combining the two spells and shooting an extremely strong magic blast at the boy. To his absolute surprise his magic causes zero damage to the barrier once again which scares him, and he immediately tries to run away from the uwu freak, only to hit a barrier laid out in front of him. 
Lloyd tells him that he wanted to be careful, so he placed another barrier outside to prevent Grimm from running out and destroying the kingdom. Grimm again starts preparing a destructive spell, but Lloyd tells him to stop and to show him his best defensive magic. After saying this, Lloyd chants a spell and shoots a magic ball so strong that it basically turns the entire barrier into a lava pit, barbecuing Grimm while Lloyd watches him from above. Soon after, Lloyd uses his magic to completely renovate the library to the condition. It was in before Grimm destroyed everything which shocks Grimm beyond belief as he starts calling him daddy. Lloyd realizes that demons can never die and starts contemplating whether he could make Grimm his test subject to try all the new spells. Grimm immediately bows down and begs for mercy, promising Lloyd to become his familiar forever which Lloyd agrees to. He then tells Lloyd that he looks too ugly so Grimm immediately transforms into cute little goat while Lloyd tells him to come in his pocket. Grimm laughs in his mind while hatching a plan to take control over Lloyd's body once he is close enough, but the moment he touches his body, Grimm realizes that Lloyd's mana is so strong that he can't even control his fingers let alone his body. He immediately starts acting like a subservient while thinking about different ways he could defeat Lloyd and destroy the kingdom one day. A couple of weeks pass by without any issue when one day, while he was reading some books in the library, his older brother Albert, who is the second in line to the throne comes in and greets him before asking whether he wants to practice with him. The young prince obviously agrees and goes downstairs where Prince Albert shows off his magic by using high fireball to hit the targets in the dead center, while all the maids and his underlings clap. The next turn belongs to Lloyd who walks up to the area, but realizes that he needs to hide his true powers, so he intentionally decides to just clip all of the targets one by one with his fireball, instead of hitting them in the middle. Everyone claps for him as well, while one of the bald politicians makes fun of Lloyd by claiming that he can only graze the targets unlike Prince Albert who can hit all the targets in the center. Albert looks at him annoyed and tells everyone to follow him upstairs, but tells Lloyd to play and practice as much as he wants. Lloyd is overjoyed at this opportunity as now he can truly use his magic to the fullest. He then turns towards Grimm and tells him that he wants to try his special magic where he used two different spells at once. Grimm is surprised and tells him that only demons can do that because they can create multiple heads, but Lloyd is stubborn and claims that he has an idea. Without any warning, he uses his magic on Grimm which sucks him inside his hand, and they try to chant two different spells at once. The first time they fail, as Lloyd was trying too complex of a spell, but he refuses to back down and the next time when they start chanting, Lloyd gets in his groove, while Grimm gets scared as he feels the unbelievable amount of mana welling from inside of the young prince. Grimm also realizes that not only is he trying to use two very complex spells, he is trying to combine magics that belong to two different class and are opposite to each other. The reality around them starts breaking as the power gets condensed into two small balls, which he then combines and shoots up in the sky with a tremendous bang, which was seen all over the kingdom. When the dust settles, Lloyd notices that he has destroyed the training yard, and moreover there is a massive hole in the sky. He gets terrified but thankfully, the hole disappears with time and everything seems to be fine. The next day, Grimm brings the newspaper to show a picture of the hole in the sky on the front page, but Lloyd's attention is turned towards the article about an adventuring party gaining lots of loot inside of a dungeon. This makes him decide that he wants to go to a dungeon, so he takes out a piece of acorn and uses his magic to create an exact replica of himself, which mirrors everything that Lloyd does. After that, he takes Grimm back into his arm and flies off to find a dungeon. But it turns out that half of Grimm's soul is magically transmitted inside the clone back at the castle, so they can communicate. Back inside the castle Grimm looks in the mirror to admire Lloyd's work, while the prince himself flies fast and far, when they suddenly spot a girl running away from a bunch of orcs. They drop down on a hilltop to observe, but to their surprise, the girl uses a special breathing technique to gain energy and burst through the first couple of orcs, defeating them one by one before exploding the last orc with a Kai blast that Lloyd has only read in books before. The girl immediately notices him and rushes up the mountain thinking that he is an enemy, but in that time, Lloyd uses his imitation magic to make himself look taller and older. The girl immediately falls for his looks and introduces herself as Tao a B-rank warrior from another continent. 
He asks whether she knows the location of any dungeons, and to impress him, she agrees to party up with him. They go inside the dungeon, where she destroys any monster that comes in front of her, while Lloyd collects glowing rocks. Some time later, while they were having lunch, Lloyd asks whether she was using Kai to get her energy, and she replies yes, while claiming that not many people know about it. While she was explaining what it is, she gets shocked to see that Lloyd already starts trying to copy her technique just by looking and manages to feel a new sort of energy inside him which makes him really happy. Later she takes him deeper into the dungeon where a monster wolf jumps at them, but she immediately uses her Kai Blast to kill it. Lloyd is really impressed by this, and they move towards the center of the room together to finally check what's inside the chest. Tao tells him that she doesn't think there would be anything extraordinary in a low-level dungeon like this, but notices that Lloyd is constantly trying to use Kai breathing, which makes her incredible happy as she starts thinking about marrying him. She moves forward happily to open the chest, but the moment she tries to lift the lid, a black blade emerges from the ground and would have sliced her in half if not for Lloyd who shoved her away as the blade slashed even the rocks behind them. Completely shocked, they back off a bit as they see a huge skeleton rising from beneath the treasure chest, ready to kill anyone in the area. Lloyd asks Tao what the hell is this monster and Tao's heart sink as she realizes that this is a lick. She immediately turns towards Lloyd apologizing as she uses a Kai technique to utterly blast him away towards the exit of the chamber. The lick immediately uses its magical blades and starts attacking Tao while she simply dodges and jumps around before kicking one of the blades, which makes her realize how powerful this lick is. She doesn't understand why would such a strong monster that even the rank adventurers might struggle against roaming around in such a low-level dungeon. She decides to keep the lick distracted so that at least Lloyd can escape the dungeon safely. Meanwhile, Lloyd is still in the air, getting blasted away, while he wonders why Tao did this, and uses his barrier ability to slow himself down while unknowingly crushing two other smaller monsters. He looks at his hand and tries to talk to Grimm, only to realize that something went wrong as Grimm seems exhausted and tells Lloyd to come home as soon as possible. Back in the boss room, Tao is somehow managing to destroy and block all of the Lick's attack, but has gotten severely injured in the process. She realizes that if this keeps up, there is no way she will be able to survive. She tries to slowly back off thinking that Lloyd must have also escaped by now, when to her absolute surprise, Lick speaks up and tells Tao that Kai magic seems to be one of the lowest forms of magic and claims that he defeated and ate a Kai magic user once, and he tasted horrible. According to him, if he eats anyone, he gains their knowledge and skills, but tells Tao that she is so weak that he doesn't even want to eat him, but asks her about Lloyd, claiming that there was something different about him as his reaction time was insanely good as he saw through the surprise attack. She tells him that the man was named Lloyd, and even though everyone on this racist continent looks down upon Kai techniques, he found it fascinating and wanted to learn it. Following that she takes a deep breath and starts attacking the monster while it hides behind his barrier, mocking her, claiming that her weak attacks can never break his shield. She continues to attack, landing a barrage of hits while thinking about how she has been working her ass off and training every single day since she was five to reach at the position she is. She pushes herself one last time and breaks through the barrier, only to find that the lick is disappeared. She falls to the ground out of exhaustion while the lick speaks up from behind, claiming that her strength is even weaker than the magic present in his single finger, making her a very boring enemy to fight against. He claims that she wasted his time and shoots a massive magical shard at her. Just as he thought it was over, his shard shatters into a hundred pieces, as it turns out that Lloyd arrived at the last moment and saved Tao's life with his barrier. He tells her that she did very well, claiming that he will take over from here and finish this monster. Tao is confused and looks at Lloyd only to see a crazed look on his face as he itches for a fight. The Lick starts chanting a spell, but before he could attack, Lloyd uses a Kai technique to quickly run behind the Lick. The Lick is shocked at his speed while Lloyd takes a deep breath and hangs upside down on the rocks, protecting himself with his barriers, while the Lick tries to land attack after attack, only to fail every time. 
Lloyd ignores the Lick's attacks and thinks about what Tao has taught him about the Kai till now as he takes a deep breath and starts sprinting around the cave while the Lick keeps attacking him to try and break his barrier. Lloyd realizes that his barrier is blocking the flow of air, so he decides to break his own barrier. This pleasantly surprises the Lick who immediately shoots a bunch of magic blasts at him, hoping to end the fight quickly. But Lloyd hangs from a rock and jumps away, dodging the attacks one by one as he parkers through the entire cave. He finally gets the hang of it and merges his Kai with his mana to create an incredible strong magic attack. He dodges some more attacks, before throwing the magic attack around him to destroy all of Lick's attacks, surprising both Tao and the monster. Lloyd is not done yet though, and creates some more magic razor blades and starts shooting it at the Lick who tries to block his attacks, but is forced to expend way too much magic to only counter Lloyd's incredibly strong strikes. The Lick is bewildered and cannot believe his eyes as Lloyd is attacking way too quickly and by merging his magic with Kai techniques, he has surpassed the powers of the Lick himself. The monster gets cut on the face which gives Lloyd some confidence as he starts making his blades thinner and sharper, forcing Lick to shell himself within his magic barrier. But to everyone's surprise, Lloyd's incredibly strong magic blades cut through the barrier alongside the Lick destroying him once and for all. After that they look through the treasure chest only to find an old knife inside, which Tao couldn't care less about. Lloyd asks whether he can take it, and she agrees but soon the entire dungeon starts trembling, shocking him. She tells him that this is normal, and every time a dungeon's treasure gets looted, the cave collapses and the dungeon disappears forever. They are able to escape outside safely while Lloyd looks at the dungeon entrance getting shut which fascinates him. Lloyd suddenly remembers that Grimm needs him and tells Tao that he needs to leave and thanks her for showing her around the dungeon. Tao shouts at him from behind, claiming that the final spell that he used is known as a Kai Blade and even she has never been able to use it but promises him that she will get stronger and learn how to use all the Kai techniques. Lloyd tells him that he will learn some more techniques from her soon and zooms away in the sky immediately. He flies through the landscape as quickly as possible and enters his room secretly, only to find Grimm on the floor, with injuries all over his body. It turns out that Silpha wanted to train him, but realized that he was much weaker than before so she decided to train her all day long which completely drained Grimm of all his energy even though he is a demon himself. Later that day, he shows Grimm the knife that he found in the dungeons, claiming that it seems to be enchanted by some spells. He immediately gets some water and uses a special magic to slowly scrape off all the magic enchantments present on the knife. Grimm tells him that magic enchantments are pretty rare and difficult to do, but Lloyd decides to learn how to enchant weapons himself and purifies the water containing the enchantment to realize that he needs oil, silver, and some weapons to practice. He asks his father for some silver, which he is very happy to provide, but Silpha tells Lloyd that she will give him some oil only if he is able to land a hit on her. They start sparring and Lloyd tries his best to match the skills of Silpha and even uses his acceleration technique to emerge behind her before trying to land an attack. Silpha dodges. Lloyd immediately uses an earth spell to create some barriers, but she dodges that as well and smashes the boulders, defeating and catching Lloyd in her arms. Even though he lost the match, she still gives him the oil as she is just happy that he didn't perform as bad as he did the other day. Grimm and Lloyd go into their secret dungeon and melt down all the silver coins before using the oil to imbue magic inside of them, creating a solution which can help them in enchantment. The final thing they need is weapons, so he goes to his older brother Albert and tells him about how he wants to practice enchantment and wants some weapons. Albert immediately tells his guard to give him some weapons and the guards put down as many weapons as they had while they all cry thinking their weapons are as good as lost, because enchanting is super hard and a ten-year-old child can never do it. Lloyd and Grimm take the weapons down into the dungeons where they start applying enchantments on them, but the steel is not strong enough and breaks into hundreds of pieces. Lloyd doesn't accept defeat though and keeps trying, breaking several weapons while being aided by Grimm and his clone who brings him tea. 
Finally, he returns back to Albert, reporting that out of 120 swords that he got, he was able to successfully enchant 50 swords, while the rest broke. Albert is beyond surprised as even the ranked enchanters only have a success rate of 10%, while Lloyd thinks about how he technically enchanted 80 blades, but he tried adding some more spells on them, and they broke, leaving only 50 swords who can't be enchanted anymore. The knights think that he is lying about the enchantments and puts his sword back in his sheath, but the sheath splits in half in an instant. Albert is really impressed and asks Lloyd whether he would want to go on a monster hunting expedition with him, and Lloyd happily agrees. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for the next part. The next morning, Albert and his party leaves from the castle in a carriage, while Lloyd sleeps inside peacefully. They travel through beautiful farmlands, and the sweet smell of wheat finally wakes him up as he checks on Grimm who was chilling out as well. A little while later Albert finally points at the entry of Forest, which gets Lloyd really excited as he asks Silpha whether they can find monsters nearby. She calmly replies that most monsters are found near the lake and not in the forest, before asking whether he is enjoying his outing. Lloyd seems to be pretty happy because he doesn't really get a chance to roam outside the castle very easily, and he is also excited to see how his enchanted swords will perform. Suddenly Silpha unsheathes her sword, scaring Albert who thought he said something wrong. But Silpha claims that monsters are nearby. Just on cue a bunch of monsters known as kobolds emerge from the woods and surround Lloyd's carriage. Silpha immediately jumps off while the knights form a protective wall around the princes. Lloyd pretends to be surprised by the attack, but Grimm claims that he knew about the presence of these monsters ever since they entered the forest. It turns out that Lloyd has been trying to use spectral detection, which is a Kai technique he recently learned which lets him know about the location of any enemies that might want to attack. Grimm is very impressed by this, as it is supposed to be a very difficult technique, but Lloyd has already managed to continuously use it for the past 24 hours. The kobolds and the knights clash, but to their surprise, the sword easily cuts through the monster's armor like butter. This scares the knights as well who have never used a sword so sharp before, and even after cutting down most of the monsters, they scared stiff because of the fact that they could cut themselves. Albert starts praising Lloyd for enchanting the swords so perfectly that even the A-rank enchanters can't compare to him while Silpha also praises him while standing on top of a mountain made up of monster corpses. Even though Lloyd never enchanted her sword, suddenly, a stray kobold emerges from the bushes and tries to attack Lloyd, but thankfully, Tao appears out of nowhere and kicks the monster away. She starts looking around for Lloyd as she sensed that someone was using Kai magic, but because Lloyd is in his kid form, she can't figure it out. Suddenly, the kobold recovers and tries to attack her again, but Silpha stabs it immediately before telling Tao to back off and not to touch Lloyd so casually. They were about to start a catfight, but Albert saves the day by telling Tao that she could accompany them till the lake if she wants. They reach by the lakeside as the moon rises up in the sky and Albert thanks Tao for saving Lloyd's life, but she still looks confused as she tries to find the traces of Kai magic that she sensed. Lloyd is relieved that his secret is not revealed and wanders back into his tent only to get strangled by an overprotective Silpha. Tao ends up witnessing all this and calls Silpha, a creep which pisses her out. They start bickering amongst themselves while the knights think that they are in heaven as they surround the girls to watch them. Lloyd slips by and walks away, thinking how this is even more suffocating than when he was in the castle. Albert starts talking to Lloyd and tells him to be wary of girls as relationships can be really scary. Meanwhile, the girls notice the boys being boys and beat the crap out of all of them which they probably liked. Silpha finally puts on her skirt while Tao tells her that she is here to repair the chapel which is present on top of the hill and Silpha tells her to get on with it and leave. But Albert stops her and claims that she shouldn't go up there at night as it could be very dangerous. He tells her that they should stay together and leave at the break of dawn, when suddenly Lloyd senses something. Immediately there's a huge blast as a giant monster appears out of nowhere making Lloyd really happy as this is the first monster that he saw in a forest. Everyone gets ready for a fight while Lloyd simply sits down on a box while Silpha stands in front of him for protection. The monster which turns out to be a bear wolf attacks the knights with a surprising speed, 
which impresses Lloyd, but he notices that Grimm seems to be lost in his thoughts. The Beowulf chases one of the knights who is saved by Tao, who uses her special Kai blast to knock it down. This is not enough though as the Beowulf gets up and attacks again while Tao dodges away. Albert finally walks up and unsheathes his sword before he starts chanting a spell. The swords start hovering behind him while draws all the magic power out of it and shoots a fireball at the monster. The spell completely barbecues the beast while everyone watches in awe at the strength of the heir to the throne. And the knights start celebrating and shouting Albert's name, claiming that his magic is the strongest. Albert tells them that his spells are not usually this powerful, but because of Lloyd's enchantments, his magic got boosted as well. While the knights and Albert think that the fight is over, Grimm calls Lloyd and tells him that he just remembered that the chapel on top of the hill was used to trap a pretty strong demon a long time ago. Before he could ask any questions however, the seemingly dead monster gets up once again, surprising every single person in the area, and literally in front of their eyes, a huge horde of monsters appear around them. Suddenly a hand pokes out of the bear wolf's mouth and a demon appears from it introducing himself as Paz and promises that he will kill every single person present here. The monsters immediately attack Albert and his party who try to stand their ground, but to their surprise, their attacks are pretty useless, because the beasts regenerate immediately. Tao kicks one of the monsters away and tells Albert that this is getting out of hand as they can't defeat these many monsters alone. The knights try to gang up on the monsters, but it's all in vain as they simply regenerate after every attack. Silpha tells Lloyd to hide behind the barrels, and he follows her instructions before asking Grimm whether he knows this monster. Grimm replies that although he doesn't know Paz personally, he is pretty sure that he was the demon who was imprisoned in the chapel on the hill. He further explains that Paz seems to be using his mana to control all the other beasts like a puppet and is using his mana to heal any damage inflicted upon them. Lloyd hears in awe before plopping Grimm to the ground and asks whether he could teach him how to do that. Grimm is shocked to see that he wants to learn the magic in the middle of this huge fight. Tao tries to stand her ground and fight back while Silpha calls her weak for not being able to defeat such weak monsters. Paz seems to be having a great time as he realizes that he is winning the battle, as these people don't know how to deal with so many monsters at once. Unfortunately, he makes a big mistake by making fun of Lloyd, as he calls him a useless kid who needs a babysitter to protect him. This really pisses Silpha off off, who asks Lloyd whether she could leave him for a moment. Lloyd doesn't really care as he is busy learning how to control mana. Suddenly everyone feels a wave of dread, as they realize that Silpha seems to be serious right now. She grabs her sword and walks towards Paz fearlessly, who makes fun of her even more. But Silpha calls her an ugly incel who has never smelt a girl before. This pisses him off, and he tries to attack her. But to everyone's surprise, Silpha not only dodges the attack, but chops off all four limbs of the beast. Paz gets really annoyed at this and starts using all of his mana to recover the bear wolf's limbs. During this time, Albert notices that the other monsters have stopped regenerating altogether, which means that if Silpha keeps dealing damage to the main body, they can defeat the smaller monsters without them being able to heal. While all this is happening, Lloyd is busy learning how to control the flow of mana while Grimm tells him that at first he should try to shape it into something, then he can try to put some color into the object, and lastly he could try to add smell to the object, but claims that it is very hardcore stuff. To his surprise, by the time he turns around, Lloyd has already created a flower made up of mana with different colors and an amazing smell. They sniff at the flower like junkies beneath a bridge while Silpha keeps styling on Paz and his bear wolf. As she knocks them to the ground one more time, she asks the knight beside her to give her his sword for a moment and he immediately agrees. While Paz is confused about who this maid is because she literally has no gaps in her defenses, he doesn't understand why a swordsman who is so strong just want to be a babysitter to a worthless child, but to Silpha, Lloyd is her everything. As she admires the sword which was enchanted by him, Paz decides to play some mind games with her, and starts laughing as he claims that he has gotten interested in the child that she is trying to hard to protect. 
he promises her that he will tear him apart piece by piece and then he will examine each and every broken part of the boy before he burns the pieces, as they will probably be nothing out of the ordinary anyways. He starts running circles around Silpha, trying to confuse and provoke her, and it seems to be working as she gets mad with rage. Paz takes advantage of this moment and jumps in to attack, thinking that he finally broke her defenses, as even the strongest humans are stupid and can be easily provoked after which it's easy to kill them. To his surprise, however, Silpha appears in front of him while inside the beast's mouth and asks who the hell does he think he is fighting. Paz is so shocked that he doesn't even know what to say, while Silpha pushes her sword through the beast's mouth and splits it in half before jumping up in the air against the moon. She dives back in once more and decapitates the bear wolf, revealing the demon inside who completely loses his composure and tries to attack. But Silpha is one step ahead. She jumps back from the beast's head and stabs the demon in the eye and the mouth before completely slashing the bear wolf's body into small pieces, throwing Paz outside completely naked. She delivers another solid strike which slashes Paz all over the body as he gets blasted into the ground, shocking every single person around as they shake with fear because they have never seen Silpha this angry. Even Lloyd is surprised to see Silpha's true strength and realizes that even he can't defeat her if she goes in full force. Silpha however only has one target as she slowly moves towards the incapacitated Paz, telling him to get ready to taste the cold touch of the sword that was enchanted by the boy who he threatened to kill. Silpha tells the demon to simply surrender as there is no way she is going to let her live. But to her surprise, Paz simply smiles and starts breathing a weird pink gas out of his mouth. This seems to increase the regeneration of the monsters who once again try to attack Silpha from behind. But Albert and Tao hit the monsters with a power blast each, saving Silpha from getting ambushed. Albert commands the troops to form a defensive line around Silpha and make sure none of the monsters can pass through so that she can deal with Paz, but suddenly the black smoke reaches them, and all of a sudden they start losing consciousness as they feel a terrible pressure and fall over to the ground. Tao realizes that this is not good, while even someone as strong as Silpha is not able to deal with this demonic gas and falls to her knees. Paz gets up and stretches his wings as he talks about how it has been over a century since he broke through the shrine that sealed him and ever since he was collecting monsters that Silpha slashed like nothing. This angers him, and he hits her straight in the face, blasting her off into the sea. Albert tries to call out to her and help, but his body can't generate any power. The demon flies up and claims that whoever inhales the demonic gas loses all their strength and simply get knocked out, which gives him ample of time to kill them however he wants. Silpha, however, is not one to be bested so easily, and tells him that his gas stanks, which annoys him, and he tries to finish her off with a kick. Thankfully, Tao reaches just in time and blocks the kick, saving Silpha's life while the demon looks confused as to how Tao is not unconscious yet. Tao asks Silpha whether she can stand up, but Silpha tells her to mind her own business as she can deal with this on her own. Tao screams at her for lying as she can't even move her body, but Silpha cuts her off and tells her that she should run towards Lloyd and make sure he is safe before she falls over into the water unconscious. Paz commends Silpha's strength claiming that she must be one of the strongest fighters alive because she was able to take so much of his dark magical smoke and yet defied him for so long. Suddenly he appears behind her and with a creepy face, asks why the hell is she not being affected by the smoke yet. She tries to kick him away, but he dodges the hit and immediately uses his tentacles to grab her leg before giving her an electric shock. He holds her upside down, as he realizes that she is using some weird breathing technique that is helping her withstand his smoke. He asks why the hell did she not run away when she had a chance. Tao believes in pretty privilege and immediately elbows him in the face like Alex Pereira, claiming that she would never become a slave for someone as ugly as him. She jumps up and then uses one of her most powerful spell, which creates such a strong impulse that he is blasted into the water. She realizes that it might have been a mistake because she needs to recover her breathing before he counters. But unfortunately, one of the dog monsters attack her from behind and try to gulp her down. She somehow manages to keep the jaws open as she realizes the monsters have been regenerated already. The demon wakes up and tells her that her entire party was nothing but trash, and she is the only person of interest alongside the swordswoman, so he will take both with him. 
Immediately, he releases his magic smoke to its full extent as he tells her to give in and become his minion, but to his surprise, the girl manages to stay in her senses and tells him that she can sense her prince in shining armor nearby, which is giving him courage and strength. Paz tells the dog to gulp her down and the monster swallows her alive. He looks around to see that the battle has been won, and now it's time to pay back. He picks the unconscious body of Silpha out from the water, claiming that she killed a lot of her minions and will have to pay for that by becoming his minion herself. He claims that he will fill her up with his magic smoke and make her serve as his attendant till the day he dies. Meanwhile, Lloyd is still playing in the background and asks how he managed to control the monsters. Paz gloats about how he killed the parents of these monsters while they were still pups, and then used his magic smoke to take control over their body and make them follow him. Suddenly he remembers that there should be no one conscious enough to talk which scares him, and he turns around to see Lloyd playing with one of the dog wolves. He asks Lloyd about how is he moving through his smoke so easily and without any damage. Suddenly Paz also notices that Grimm is a demon and asks whether he is protecting the little kid and starts making fun of him for falling so low as a demon that he became a babysitter. This pisses Grimm off, but he knows that Paz isn't going to say the light of day anyways. So he swallows his anger and tells him that he was going to give him some advice as a fellow demon. But now all he wants to do is watch him die in pain. Paz laughs at this and sends in his demon dogs to tear the boy to shreds. Lloyd seems pretty happy about this, as this will give him an opportunity to try his newly learned mana transmutation magic. Grimm tells him that he will have to put out quite a bit of mana for this, but it doesn't matter to Lloyd as he starts fixing his mana output and uses it to create a warm and gentle bed of flowers. This breaks the monsters out of the demon's control and makes them remember the warmth they felt when they were with their family, and how Paz killed their parents. Paz is beyond baffled as he watches Lloyd surrounded by his monster dogs as he pets all of them. Lloyd then walks over to one of the dogs and asks him to spit out what he ate. The dog immediately spits an unconscious Tao out of his mouth and lays her down on the ground. Paz tries to regain control and blasts a load of magic smoke out, but Grimm tells him that it won't be enough anymore as these monsters are all grown up and mad with anger. All the dog wolves attack Paz with an incredible speed and start tearing him to shreds by their pack hunting techniques. Lloyd is pretty intrigued by their strategy as they all move forward to chew the demon out. But Paz immediately regains control and bashes the heads of the dogs against each other before throwing them down in the water. He gets so pissed at them, not following his orders that he goes down and starts kicking one of them in the body screaming at him for not following orders as he promises to kill his remaining family the moment he is done with this kid. While Lloyd watches as Paz gets mad with anger and his body starts leaking mana everywhere, Lloyd wonders to himself about why the demons don't die which forces the wizards to seal them with one trick or another. Paz on the other hand starts extending his overpowering mana, completely killing off all the flowers created by Lloyd who comes to the conclusion that maybe the wizard just didn't have magic strong enough to kill a demon. Suddenly, the entire area turns dark as Lloyd uses his domain expansion, causing Paz to stand like an idiot as he gets paralyzed with fear. Grimm finally tells Paz why his magic smoke never had any effect on Lloyd and claims that Lloyd's mana is so incredibly high that there was no way Paz's minuscule mana pool could ever overpower him. Meanwhile, Lloyd gets excited to try out all the new spells he wanted to use. Paz realizes that the kid's mana is way too much as he starts sweating, when Lloyd tries to trap him in a shield, but he barely escapes. This confuses Paz at first, but this he realizes that this isn't even a fight to Lloyd and he is simply having fun and want to trap him in a cage like a lab animal so that he can experiment his strong magic on him. He starts escaping the area as fast as possible, while Lloyd keeps creating barriers pinballing the demon all over the place. He then turns towards Grimm and tells him to help him trap the demon and Grimm obeys. After this they are able to put twice as many barriers in half as much time, and even Paz realizes that this is too much as he tries to run away, but gets caught in the end. The demon tries to run away, but the barrier is too strong and he is kept inside of it, which makes him start begging for his life, as he promises to give Lloyd a very high position in his court once he becomes the king of this world. But Lloyd doesn't care about all that and alongside Grimm, he starts compiling a bunch of spells together. He combines the spells of all the different elements before multiplying them by 100 and deploys them with triple the intensity, completely blasting the demon inside the barrier for 30 straight minutes just to see how much damage can he take. After watching for a while, he finally releases the demon from the barrier, 
who looks completely withered and half dead as he stands in the air unmoving. The demon starts turning to ash while Lloyd realizes that everyone is starting to wake up so he immediately runs away to avoid any suspicion. He meets up with Albert, and when Albert asks what happened to the demon, Lloyd lies that an incredible magician named Robert killed it and ran away. A couple days later, Albert and his party return to the kingdom to great fanfare, where they are presented in front of the king, who commends them for being able to hold their own against such an incredibly powerful demon. Albert claims that there were two other people as well, Tao and the mysterious magician Robert. Tao wanted to find Robert so she went inside the forest and didn't come back. The king seems to be happy and tells Albert that he is doing good as the second prince, and has a high chance of becoming the next king. But Albert claims that Lloyd is the one who was the most helpful as without his enchanted weapons, they could have never done anything. To everyone's surprise, he then asks the king to also include Lloyd in the race to become the new king and the king accepts. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for part 5, and make sure to check out this brand new anime about a lonely guy who marries his childhood crush and learns how to become the strongest spy.